So we're now for the web. We can talk to Mark Benioff, an internet entrepreneur who runs the Silicon Valley based Salesforce.com and Ajax Scott, publisher of Music Week. Um, Ajax, I'll ask you first. I mean, I am one of those people, it, specifically in connection with the music business, who likes buying a thing. You know, I like having the CD. In the old days, I used to like having records with record sleeves. I still do yeah. like having records. But is that is that complete? I mean, is that just old history? Did people not care about that anymore? No, it, it's not. Quite rightly, there's a huge buzz about the internet and how it's changing the face of the music business, along with everything else. Actually, um, about 95% of money from record sales is from selling vinyls, from selling CDs. So it's not actually about digital yet in terms of where people are really making money. So yes, right. you can download tracks onto your mobile. Yes, you can get it onto the internet. And that is growing really quickly. But actually for most people, especially around Christmas, it's going and buying the greatest hits from Oasis or whatever it is uh, in Woolworths, in supermarkets, in HMV. And we're going to keep on doing that. And Do, do you think... I mean, is that going to be the case? Or are people just going to download the, the next, and make yeah, up no. their own uh, CDs to give to their relatives? Oh, I think the copyright lawyers would probably have something to say then. Um, no, of course, of, of, of course. Well, once you've bought, what I mean is once uh, you've actually bought the record, is no, what uh, I'm uh, saying. Uh, yeah. uh, absolutely. But the whole thing, it's about consumer choice, and that's what's really changing now. It used to be that um, a record company would decide when it was going to release the Oasis record or any other record, and how many tracks were going to be on it, and as a consumer, I had to go and buy that because I didn't have any other choice. Now, actually, the artist can decide what tracks they want to make available, in what format, whether they want to be free promotionally or whether they want to charge money for them. And the consumer can then decide what it does with it, what, what they do with that, whether you want to download it, whether you want to make a compilation, whether you want to pass it on to your friends. And that's changing the balance of power. And it's not just changing for the consumer, is it? It's also changing in the corporate world as well. Well, that, that's exactly right. You hear about this incredible transformation, which is artists are not beholden to record companies anymore. I mean, that's a huge change. It's never happened before in history of music. I mean, today, now, if you're an artist, like my cousin Alison Lewis, just this week, she published her MySpace page. She didn't have to buy any software. She didn't have to buy any hardware. She didn't hire a consultant. She didn't do anything. Now she's just on MySpace. People can hear her music and check it out, buy things from her. That's amazing. And it's because it's a service, right? It's delivered right over the internet. Well, now the same thing is happening for businesses also. You know, businesses used to have to buy software from SAP or Microsoft or Oracle to empower themselves, just like these artists used to have to be beholden to record companies. Well, it's soft power released to businesses because businesses can now run right over the internet also. But some of the principles of good business will never change, will they? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a shortcut possibly to getting attention or putting yourself out there. But there's a danger, is there not, that people think that you've got a space on the internet somewhere, therefore you've got a business and that means you're successful. But in fact, I mean, real businessmen will tell you a very different story, wouldn't they? Today's world is all about making things lower cost and easier to use. It's all about uh, empowering the unempowered. Corporations today, they have to remove the complexity. So they're looking to get rid of their data centers entirely. You know, they're not buying those big mainframes from IBM anymore in the same way that you don't have to go to the record company for that same kind of infrastructure. Instead, you're able to use all these services right over the internet. That's the democratization that's happening around the world that's so powerful today for consumers and business. And that's the thing, going back to the individual again, that we, if we're aspiring singers or <laughs> whatever, we want to produce our own music, we can do that. We can, um, but I think there's two really important things to remember here. Firstly, you need to make good music, because anyone can put music, there, is a, there are, there are hundreds of thousands them, yeah. of rubbish songs out there that frankly no one is ever going to listen to because they're rubbish. Now, maybe the, the artist's friends or family do, which is great, and good luck to them, but actually, to be, to be successful, first of all, you need to have good songs to, to cut through. And secondly, although it is possible to get to a certain level and certain types of artists, maybe artists who've got a fan base because they've been going for 20 years and they don't need the infrastructure anymore, or maybe someone who's doing something really cool left field, which is great as well. You can build a network, but you do uh, still need some kind of machine behind you. It might not be a huge corporation, but you do need to be able to plug into something. And that's why the business is changing quickly, but it ain't, the current business ain't going to die overnight. Presumably, too, that all the labels, in the, in the case of music, the labels are also using the internet to find these people. So, yeah, I mean, they're sure. subverting the system because they'll just see them and right. buy them up in yeah. the old way. And you can talk about all the rubbish that might be on uh, MySpace, but the reality is there was a lot of, lot of rubbish in the record store before that. Mm. The reality is you're just going to get a huge amount of volume. Mm. You know, we're going to hear artists from Asian countries and from African countries and from all over the world that we couldn't get before because once you're on the internet, you're on the internet. You, anyone can get to it on their phone, on their laptop, on any device. I mean, that's, that's the power. The data is flowing today persistently, right, wirelessly. Everywhere you go, you have this network access. Even when you're in the coffee shop now, you can have high bandwidth. 
You know, that's a big change. Just 10 years ago, people never even heard of a browser. Now we, you know, we can't live without it. Yeah. So don't forget one thing. In our industry, people always overestimate what you can do in one year. They underestimate what you can do in one decade. These technologies are still very, very new. You're going to see the transformation of so many industries. It's the end of these music publishers. It's the end of the software industry as we've known it, well, too. Well, we'll all be here in 10 years to find out, then, won't we? <laughs> I wonder what we'll be like then. Anyway, lovely to see you. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming Thank in. Thank, Thank you. you.